At Option Genius, we believe that you deserve freedom, financial freedom, so that you have no more worries and more than enough money. Time freedom, so that you could do what you want, when you want to do it. And choice freedom, to live your life on your terms. But the system and Wall Street are rigged against us little guys. So how do we fight back? Well, my friend, that's what this podcast is all about. My name is Alan Sama, and this is the Option Genius Podcast. Hey guys, it's Alan. I just want to start off by saying I apologize if the audio quality, the audio quality is not uh, that good today. I'm recording this in my car, I'm driving around. I don't even know where I am. I spent the car, started driving in the middle of some farms and cows and stuff. That's all I can see, so I don't, I don't even know what road I'm on. But basically what I'm doing today is I'm going through what I call the four stages of overcoming losses. Today is October 11th. I don't know when you're listening to this, but it's October 11, 2018. And over the last week or so, the market, uh, the S&P in particular, dropped about 3%, which is not a big deal, but yesterday dropped another 3%, and today is down another 1%. So it kind of feels like the world is caving in, especially as a trader. You know, we, we live and die by how much, how well we're doing. And when you see red across your screen all over the place, it's kind of like, you know, your blood is coming out of your guts and stuff. So it feels miserable. So I am depressed. I am down. I am angry. I am upset. It's one of those days where you just don't want to get out of bed. You just want to stay in the covers and cry, really. <laughs> I mean, a little bit later. <laughs> um, it wasn't as bad now as as it was back in the financial crisis. Um, those were day after day of wanting to just stay in bed and cry. And I'm laughing about it now, but yeah, I did feel like crying about this morning. And, you know, I just wanted to be open and honest and raw. I know you're not supposed to, like, as a, you know, I'm running an advisory and telling people how to trade and teaching, and I'm not supposed to be like, oh, you know, I should be all... Motivation will be like, yeah, don't worry, the market's going to recover, and yeah, it will, but when you're going through it, when you're suffering those losses, man, you feel completely alone, you feel like the world is ending, you feel like, oh my god, what the hell, I could have done something better, what did I do, what did I do this for, oh, you second guess all your stuff, maybe I should go get a job, <laughs> you know, all these kinds of things, I mean, the losses aren't that bad right now, for me at least, and so it's not dire, it's not like... You know, I'm not keeping up or anything, but it just feels really bad when you're going through it. And so I wanted to make this podcast to throw a lifeline out to those of you who are also going through the same thing. Or, you know, if you're ever going through a series of really tough losses, I wanted to share the four steps that I go through whenever this happens to me. And hopefully those will help you overcome. Now, normally, you know, like there's this woman, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, who came out with the five stages of grief. If you've studied psychology in college or high school or whatever, they, you know, you cover that. They got denial and anger and whatever the other ones. But when, when you're going through grief, when you have a loss or when you lose somebody or somebody dies, you go through these five stages and Everybody goes through the five stages. You might do it differently. You might skip one, or you might spend a lot of time on one. You might get stuck in one, or you might do one and then go to the next one and then come back, or go back and forth, back and forth. But everybody goes through these five stages. So if, you, if you're if you having emotional issues and you cannot overcome them, then maybe you want to go take a look at those five stages of loss. Just Google it or something, and it'll, you'll, I'm sure you'll find articles to help you through it. What I do is when I'm dealing with trading losses, um, the biggest thing is that you have to overcome it emotionally. Otherwise, you'll never get back into the mental aspect of being able to do it successfully again. And so the first thing I do, step one, is really to get out of the pain. So whatever positions are causing you stress, whatever positions are causing you pain, whatever are hurting, I get out of those. So this morning, I had a big position on in SPX, I had some weeklies on and I had some monthlies on that expire a week from now. I mean, those are really painful because I've been watching this trade for the whole month and now a week left and, you know, 
I just got to pull the plug because I can't take it anymore. It's driving me crazy. I, um, you know, it's like, oh, every point the S&P drops, it's like a dagger in my heart. And so uh, I can't take it. And I had a couple of other positions where I was losing. So I just, just got out of everything, you know, just got out of every losing position. Um, and there are times when you want to get out of all your winning positions too, you know, so everything is wiped clean. Now, you don't do this with your long-term holdings and whatnot, but short-term option trades, just get out of everything. Just clean the board, fresh start, you know, just nothing there to worry about, nothing there to to think about, because then you have to do stage two. And that's the the physical aspect, right? Just getting out of everything. That's stage one. And that will help you because there's no more stress. There's no more pain. Then you just have to deal with what you've already lost, and so that's step two, which is to deal with it or to feel better about it. Um, should have given it a better name than that, but uh, you know, this is this is where this is why I'm driving around because that helps me clear my mind. Um, so this is where you take as long as you need to. It could be a couple hours, depending on the loss. It could be a day. It could be two days a week. However long it takes you to get over that pain, that loss, uh, and you do what you need to do. So, I mean, you know yourself best if you need to go for a run. A lot of people do that. Go go running, you know, build up a sweat, go to the gym, do whatever, work out, get over that loss. If you need to take a nap, I used to do that a lot, and it's not actually very, I thought it was beneficial. I thought it was helpful, but it actually, <laughs> it leads to more depression. But if you need to take a nap, you want to take a nap, go take a nap. You know, if you want to get in the car and drive, do that. If you want to... You know, maybe go to a movie in the middle of the day. Just get out, go to a movie, get your mind off of it, and do what you need to do to calm yourself, to bring yourself back to center. And that will help you. And then when you're done with that, then you move on to stage three. Stage three is reassessment, where you actually go through what happened? You go back and look at your trades. What was going on in the market? Um, why did you have these losses? Could you have done anything in advance? Were there any signs that you missed that you should have been paying attention to? Or maybe you even saw, but you ignored them for some reason. And this is a lot. We cover this part of it in one of our trainings called Trade Hacks, Trading Hacks. And I go through the different things that you can look for to signal when trouble is coming up and how to avoid that. And, you know, as a human being, I made mistakes. That's why I'm suffering these losses. That's why I'm going through this right now. It's hard to admit it, but I did not follow my own trade hacks, you know? I probably could have taken action a couple days ago, a day ago, a week ago to save myself some of this or, or limit it. Um, but, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. You never know exactly what the market's going to do. You never know. But um, if I had followed those rules that I had laid out for myself, things wouldn't have been as bad for my own personal trading. And so, you know, you have to go back and reconfirm yourself and say, yes, you know, I need to follow my rules again. I need to get back in there, go back to the basics, you know, go back to why I messed up. What did I do wrong? What didn't I not pay attention to? Because once you've been trading for a while, you know, in the back of your mind, it's like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. You know, it's like when you're starting to drive, you know, when you're, when you're learning how to drive, you pay attention to everything. You pay attention to every little knob and dial and, you know, every little indicator on the car dashboard, you know, but when you've been driving for years, put the key, you know, turn in the ignition, put it in drive, just go. And then... You're not checking the review. Oh, I'll get to that later. You're not checking the side mirrors. You know, you're not checking how much gas you have. You're just going and then you're, oh, wait, I got to do something. Okay. So you don't pay attention as much as you should. In driving, you know, you can auto correct while you're going along. In trading, if you do not, then things can happen. Bad things can happen if you're not paying attention and you could lose. And then in the market also, you know, there's no telling what the market could do. And so when it's going down a lot further than we think it's going to do, then, then it really eats you up inside mentally and emotionally. Oh, geez, man, I messed up. It's not the market's fault. I mean, the market does what it does, right? We have to respond to it. We have to trade the market that we have. 
we can't just wish for a market and this market in particular has been going up for like eight, nine years, right? Um, so now we have a little dip. It's not even, not even a 10% correction yet, but it's causing me this much pain because I got too complacent. I got too maybe even arrogant that, you know, I'm just putting on trades and it's working, putting on trades and working, putting on trades working. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about it. And you get lax. You kind of fall asleep at the switch and then a rude awakening happens and boom. Oh man. Whoops. Messed that up. And these happen, you know, it's, you were new, we're human nature. It's going to happen. That's why we trade options the way we do with uh, built in protections. And so when there is a loss, it shouldn't be catastrophic. It shouldn't just, you know, blow up your whole account and it should be contained, which mine are. They're overcomable, you know? They're still big, you know, several percentage points, but I can still overcome them. But that doesn't make the pain any less, you know? Because the more you trade, the bigger your accounts get. When you have a loss, the bigger the losses. And so it's, you don't look at it like a percent. Oh, I, I lost 14%. Oh, okay. You don't look at it like that. You lost, oh my God, I lost $60,000. Oh my God. You know, that's, that'll freak you out. Anybody, it'll freak out anybody. If I got a millionaire, like, what? We lost $60,000. Oh my God. And that's just an example. And that's not an accurate number for myself, but is you know, I'm just throwing numbers out there. So that's part, step number three, right? Where we go back and we reassess and we say, okay, what did we do wrong? What could we have done better in the future? This is where all the learning takes place. This is one of the most important steps that you cannot really skip. And you cannot do this properly until you've completed step number two, where you've actually centered yourself and you've actually, you know, gotten over the loss. So if you haven't gone over the loss yet, then do that first, because then step three will not be as effective as it should be. And then um, once you're doing step three, you go over everything, you look at the past, you try to go through the exact trade if you can, if you have some backtesting software, go through it day by day, see what you could have done differently. If there's nothing you could have done differently, then you need to work on, you know, your loss prevention mechanisms. You need to work on your asset allocation, maybe. You know, find out what you could have done to limit the loss. And that's one of the things that we cover in the Protect Your Portfolio book that I've written. That was one of the reasons we wrote the book, was to help people know what to do to protect themselves and hedge themselves in a situation like this, you know, if there's a bear market or if there's a flash crash or if there's a panic or anything like that, there are different strategies that you can use to limit your losses to protect yourself. What I'm talking about right now is, you know, I've already suffered the losses, so I'm going through these four stages of getting over it. And then step four is to get back on the horse, you know. You've you've gotten out of trouble. That was step one. Exited all your trades. Step two, you've dealt with the pain. Step three, you went back and you try to figure out what could have gone better, if anything. And now step four, you get back on the horse. You start trading again. Now, depending on how bad the loss is and how long or how the market is reacting determines the time when you get back on the horse. Now, I just got out of everything today. I'm not getting back on the horse tomorrow. I'm not getting back into my trades tomorrow. I am going to wait for a significant amount of time for the markets to actually calm down themselves before I get back in. Does that make sense? You don't want to jump back in. You know, oh, I, you know, I, I lost on my puts today. I'm going to go jump in and call tomorrow or in the afternoon or I'm going to roll right now. No, if you're suffering pain, you don't want to be rolling. You don't want to get more in trouble. If you're suffering a lot of emotional pain, just get out of the trade. If your emotional Set, it balance is uncentered. If you're not centered emotionally, you're not thinking straight, you're not trading straight, get out of the position. Get out of any position that's causing you pain. I can't stress that enough. That is the only way that you're actually going to be able to think clearly and rationally again. So when you're back, getting back on the horse in step number four, let's get back in slowly. Let's get back in once everything has settled down. Now, how do you know when things have settled down? Well, I like to do it when... The market is not moving several standard deviations, or at least not even one standard deviation. So if you don't know what a standard deviation is, again, go look at that trading hats, trading hacks program that we have, the training program. It covers that in detail. But 
I want to see the market relax and calm down and move less than one standard deviation in a day or two days in a row before I will even consider getting back into the market when we've had a big decline. And so that is like one of my barometers. You need to come up with your own barometer. Um, don't do it on a percentage basis. Like today, the S&P is down 1%, which normally is not a big deal. But after coming off, you know, from yesterday's 3% and 3% the, the last three or four days before that, you know, it's adding up. So tomorrow, if the market goes up 2%, I won't be surprised. But that doesn't tell me that it's all clear. You know, that could just be a snapback rally. The volatility is still going to be up. VIX is, VIX is spiked considerably in the last three days. And so the volatility is still going to be there. That's not enough for me to say that, you know, things are back to normal or calm again. Things are rational. You don't want to see big moves day after day, even up or down, up or down. And you want to see calmness. You want to see everything come back to normal before you go back into the market and start putting your trades on. And you have to remember that we are always going to have more wins than losses, but when we do have the losses, they'll be larger, right? The the losses are going to be larger than the wins. And so they do hurt emotionally when we happen when because we're not used to them, number one. And number two, the numbers are bigger. So if you're used to winning 100 bucks, 100 bucks, 100 bucks, 100 bucks, but then you lose 400, it's like, oh my God, that's such a big loss. Because you're used to the small numbers. You're used to the 100, 100, 100. So if you lose 100, no big deal. But if you lose 400, oh my God, it's a big deal, right? So we have to keep that in mind. And that is one of the things that we go through when we're getting over it. So we reassess and we go over everything. And then we plan our next moves. We get back on the horse. And then we move forward. Because the odds are in our favor. They always will be. But if the trades are not going in our favor... Even though the odds in our favor, then there's something else at work. And so we need to figure out what that is. All right? So if you don't know what it is, stay out of the market. If you don't know why things are moving so much, stay out of the market. Do more research. Do more homework. But do not be trading. Until things calm down, things settle down, and you have a better handle on yourself, and you have a better idea of how the market is going to react in certain ways. So if it's calm, that's what I want to trade. I don't want to be trading crazy, choppy markets, going up and down, up and down on a daily basis when nobody can predict and nobody knows what the heck is going on and there's blood in the water, blood in the streets. I don't want to be selling options on those days. So this brings me to another point is, you know, the, the diversification that you should have. And we've recently just had something that we call passive trading, which is going to be a big deal for us. Um, it's a, it's a new way of trading options as well as stocks together and doing so in a passive way. Those trades that I've been doing with my passive trading are doing great. You know, the stocks are down, but the options are making money. And when this decline stops, I'm going to be in a much better position with those accounts that are doing passive trading. So that is something that we're going to roll out pretty soon. You'll be hearing more about it. If you're interested, email us and um, we'll give you more details about it. Um, I'm actually in the process of writing a book about it. So it's a, it's a new way of trading. It's really cool. I'm really excited about that. So that's something I do have looking, something I have, do look forward to. But for now, I just wanted to make this podcast. I hope this helps you. I've been through this process a few times, done it different ways. Uh, banged my head against the wall, screamed at my wife and kids for days on end. Um, those were not very beneficial. <laughs> um, so maybe that's, that's something that I should have mentioned in step number two, where you don't want to take it out on other people. You don't want to take out your anger and aggression and depression on other people. So if you have to, stay away from other people if that's you. You know, I mean, you know who you are. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't handle it. Um, I don't handle losses very well. Especially like, you know, we did have a, an option genius trade that lost money. We did have a weekly trading system trade that lost money. And I'm really, really, really upset about those more than the other trades that I lost money on because I know that's my own money. But when I lose on one of my advisory trades, that really, really pisses me off. Um, I get really upset about that. But I need to be careful that I do not take it out on my wife, my kids. I was very depressed last night and I was horrible. I didn't eat um, well. I went out, got a bunch of fast food. I got some more right now. (laughs) 
you know, comfort food kind of thing. Um, but you do what you got to do for those couple of days until you recover and you get over it. And so that's the process that I'm in. Um, not going into the office for a while. I'll probably go in later on. We do have a webinar tonight, so I have to go in for that. Can't cancel that, but probably tomorrow I'll probably take the day off, you know, just because I need to deal with myself emotionally and get back to centered as soon as possible so that I can continue. So take your time, do what you need to do, do what you got to do, but follow these four steps when you have massive losses and they will help you overcome, you know, get over it and get back on the horse and get back to trading. Because if you do have massive losses, yeah, you can say, oh, I give up, but this doesn't work and make whatever excuses you want. But in the end, if you want to succeed, you're going to, you're going to have setbacks. You're going to have losses. The market's going to give us losses. We have to learn to deal with it. If we just give up, then we'll never reach our goals. So if this is the path you want to take, if this is, this is what you want to do. And I hope it is because it's amazing. 99% of the time, it's amazing. You know, maybe once a year, you might have a time where you're feeling, at least for me, I, you know, I feel this bad. Um, when I was learning how to trade, it was a lot more often. It was maybe once a month. But since, you know, it's gotten better, I've been more control over my emotions, and now it's gotten a lot less. So follow these four steps. If you have any cover, if you have any losses, overcome them. This is how you do it. This is the plan. If you need any help, reach out to me. And uh, we'll be sure to help you out as much as we can. Peace. Don't forget, trade with the odds in your favor. Bye. Do you want to get started living the Option Genius lifestyle today? Well then, head on over to OptionGenius.com and sign up for our free 9-lesson course on how to sell options. 